Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at AWS reInvent in Las Vegas. I'm in the Zscaler suite. I'm with Shrikanth Norari. You are a uh, senior director of um, worldwide specialist. World, yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, and what is that? What is what is that involved with Zscaler? Yeah. So this is uh, you know we have a platform uh, focusing on protecting data for customers. And then uh, I am responsible for a team of specialists that are helping the customers in securing their data in different environments, including public cloud environments. Yeah, well, that's good I'm talking to you because I want to talk about data security. Uh, obviously, with AI being hot today, in fact, uh, I think uh, most of the content in the reInvent keynote, Mac Arms keynote, was around AI. Uh, there's been a, certainly a lot of movement of data to and from um, you know, public clouds and yep. to private cloud. What are you seeing in the data security market right now? And uh, have you seen a, an uptick in interest because of AI? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, there are three, four themes that are driving a lot of focus on securing the data in the public cloud environments. The first and foremost uh, is a lot of customers are migrating from the data centers into the public cloud. There's a ton of data in the data centers that needs to go into the public cloud. Now they are making decisions around, hey, what should we even move, what should we discard, and things like that, and they need solutions to help with them with that process. The second most important thing is the whole proliferation of AI in, in, in the enterprise environment. Like, for example, uh, when, when customers are leveraging the generative AI models, uh, a lot of the data is in the public cloud environment, and these Gen AI models are using that data. So it's very important that the right data is used in the Gen AI and not the customer's data is in Gen AI. So that's where they need a set of solutions to help them understand what kind of data is in the public cloud. Is it sensitive? Does it belong to customers? If yes, is any Gen AI using it and things like that. So the migration from the data centers to cloud, the growth of Gen AI and leverage of data by the Gen AI tools is what is driving the uptick in this market. Okay, and uh, there's been a lot of activity in this market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially on the M&A side. Yep. I think that's one indicator of how much momentum there is in DSPM and, uh, right now. But uh, what are customers asking you about it right now? Yeah, the customers, like when they think about data, historically, a lot of focus has been around, hey, when sensitive data is leaving our environment, how do we identify it, stop it, and things like that. But today, because of this movement into the public cloud, and not only public cloud, other channels like SaaS applications like Salesforce or ServiceNow and things like that, organizations don't have a good handle of what data is out there in, the, in those environments. So the first question they're asking us is, hey, we want to understand what, what data from our organization in, is all these environments, and can you help us understand that, and is there sensitive data in it, and then are the right controls in place so the right people and right entities can have access to that data. Okay, and then what uh, what is Zscaler doing in this? Yeah, so Zscaler, uh, we, we, we look at it in a, a couple of lens. One, when you talk about protecting data, there are two aspects to it, right? There is data in motion, and then there's data at rest, okay? So Zscaler as a company, we have always been helping customers protecting their data in the motion. Now, with our expanded portfolio, we are also looking at data at rest in multiple channels. Historically, what happened in this space is that there was a DLP vendor focusing on endpoint, or there a DLP vendor focused on inline, but Zscaler has taken an approach that, hey, for customers, really a couple of things very important. One, they need to protect both data in motion and data at rest wherever that data is, so that's one key uh, principle of our platform. So we help with data in motion, we also help with data at rest in five different channels. Endpoint, SaaS, public cloud, email, uh, and uh, also going through uh, uh, a browser isolation, we call it, okay? Right, yeah. So we do that. And then the second important thing we do uh, is that if you look at the organizations, when they had these siloed solutions, they were all kind of a little bit disjointed, right? A data production program for endpoint and a data production program for you know different environment. The thing that we try to solve is that how can we help the customers focus on defining what is important for them once, and then let the definition be leveraged to apply across all channels, whether at rest channels or in inline uh, you know, uh, traffic. So that way, when they say that this is my sensitive data, whether the data is an endpoint or cloud or SaaS or inline, it means the same thing, and that's, that's where we really differentiate. And then the third thing that we are doing is, historically a lot of customers de depended on predefined dictionaries or 
uh, a set of things to go and look for sensitive data. But today, with the AI and ML available solutions available to you, we actually help the customers understand what they have in the in these environments without they having to go and spend all this time defining different programs, right? We apply our AI and ML models, we tell them what kind of sensitive data is there, whether it's PII, whether it's legal documents, financial documents, all of that we do it through the AI and ML model. So these are different things that we are doing to help the customers basically secure their data in motion, data in rest, and also do it in a centralized way that they don't have to do it separately for different channels. I uh, got it. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I've always liked about Zscatter is uh, since its launch, it's been a disruptor in mm -hmm. the security space. In fact, it uh, it's disrupted many markets, yeah. uh, in, you know, including uh, remote access and firewall and yeah. things. Now, in the DSPM space, <clears throat> is there something that you feel is uniquely Zscaler in which you're using to disrupt this segment as well? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to DSPM, let's talk about AWS Public Cloud. We're here at this event. Um, first of all, with Zscaler, because the customers are already leveraging Zscaler for their inline data production, when they say, hey, now I want to extend my data production program to public cloud, they have to do nothing. Like, we literally mm -hmm. take the work they already done in the inline and then apply to the public cloud. Then the second thing we do is that we use our AI and ML models to go and figure out things that are there in those environments that the customer may not be even aware of, for example, be using these models. And the third thing is that you know, you can, it's one thing to identify, like we have sensitive data in the public cloud, but let's say when the data is leaving the public cloud environment, how can you go and prevent that from happening? So we do that. So those are the things that we do uh, differently in, 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 in our DSPM. And then we have taken it one level further, which is like most of the data production solutions, they, they, they focus on identifying the sensitive data, which is great. But when we say that there is sensitive data, we also want to make sure the security posture around the data is, is good, right? For example, if the data is hosted in a database, is the database encrypted? Is it exposed to internet? If the database is accessed by a virtual machine, does the virtual machine has any vulnerabilities, that unpatched vulnerabilities? All of that we provide a 360, 360 degree view in one single pane of glass, that way, when you look at the data, you know there is sensitive data, but you also know you're doing these 10 things to protect that data. Ah, got it, okay. Now, we are at reInvent, mm -hmm. and I know you made an announcement yep. uh, this week, and so can you talk about that, but also the broader uh, relationship that you have with AWS? Yeah, absolutely. AWS is a great partner for us, uh, and, and, and we have been using them in our technology solutions. We, we actually have solutions protecting uh, things that are happening in the AWS environments for our customers. The specific thing that we have launched is really there are two problems that we tried to solve with the launch that we did today. One is that when you look at a large organization, we all know there are hundreds of AWS accounts for those organizations, okay? But what we don't know is that there are also a lot of shadow AWS accounts in the organizations. So if those shadow accounts are not under the corporate AWS umbrella in an organization, then you really don't know what data is going into no. the environment. And there's a lot of those. Absolutely, yeah. right. So the, the first uh, capability that we launched is that we will help the customers detect their shadow cloud accounts. Like if there are uh, 100 corporate AWS accounts and there are another 50 shadow accounts lying in their environment, yeah. we will help them surface that. And then we also help them look at what's there in those environments. So that's the first capability we launched. And as you sense that most customers have, have no idea how many shadow accounts? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's literally, you know, if you have a credit card, you can go and yeah, <laughs> yeah, get yeah, an yeah. account, right? <laughs> and if they are not connected to the right uh, org accounts in AWS, you, you, you will never know that there's an account lying there. So the second thing that we also did is that, uh, you know, if you look at the data and the data gets stored in public clouds in multiple ways, uh, you have blob storage as historically like S3, the SQL databases like SQL servers and things like that, but now also no SQL databases like DynamoDB and things like that. So a capability that we launched today is we have always been doing the Azure blobs and the SQL databases. Today we extended that capability to the uh, DynamoDB no SQL type databases as well. So those are the two big functionalities that we launched today. Yeah, and then they're also a technology partner, right? You run an AWS as well. So. That's correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the, the DSPM as a platform is completely um, uh, built on AWS as a, as a yeah. platform, yes. Yeah, and then so um, if you put your vision hat on, mm -hmm. right, obviously I think with AI the security market's rapidly evolving. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, 
you know, DLP has really evolved a lot, yep. right? I think you guys are helping move that along. But what does this industry look like in five years? What, what's your vision for it? Yeah, I think there are kind of three broad themes that I think will, will take this industry forward as, as, we, as we look ahead. The first and foremost, we talked about this, this separation between data at rest as a separate focus and data in motion as a separate focus, we think will go away. And you'll have just data. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's all about data. You want to know what data you have, and you want to know when it's leaving your environments, right? And, and, and that will converge, and that I think we see that convergence. The second thing is that this whole siloed approach of an endpoint DLP being separate and a SaaS DLP being separate, all of that will go away. We expect customers to say, hey, data is data, it doesn't matter where it is, I want one platform, that platform should help me understand where I have the data and then and then protect that data. So this consolidation, I think it's, it's coming, it's already here, and I think we, we only expect it to accelerate. And then finally the AI, which I think will change a lot more. For example, um, today, when you talk about AI, there are multiple things happening. For example, you might have uh, you know, a developer in an organization trying to access chat GPT. You want to know about it. Hey, you have developers accessing chat GPT. But most importantly, you want to understand what are they doing with chat GPT? What kind of prompts are they putting? Are they just checking, hey, show me a travel itinerary for Switzerland? Or are they saying like, hey, cut and paste the code and optimize this code for me, right? Yeah. So you want to know. So there is this whole aspect of the prompts and what kind of prompts are going in, you know, ability to log those prompts and then being able to see, okay, what people are doing and then put some restrictions around it. That's one, one, one big theme around the AI. The second big theme around the AI is using the AI to help with the data production programs, right? Like, nobody has time to go and sit and write like, okay, this is what I care for, look for this information in, my, in, 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 in your environment. Now, for example, at Zscaler, we process ton of traffic and data every day we can learn from that and say when we look at something we can tell with a high level of confidence whether it's a credit card number or whether it's a resume or a legal document we can tell that so you, we will we will see ai and ml models coming in to help customers understand what's sensitive and then and then we will see that growing a lot and then finally and most importantly it's all about what cust what data from the organization is being used by these AI models, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a very important use case. So for example, uh, you know, a lot of AI models depend on data stored in S3 buckets. Like if you have customer data in your S3 buckets, if some custom AI model, even by your own developers are using that, how do you know and how do you kind of make sure that that doesn't happen, uh, you know, uh, unintentionally, for example? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this market. I think. Uh, yeah, it's often been said that in AI, data is the new gold. Yep. And I think for the first time in a long time, customers have actually have a strong focus on how to manage their data, yep. where it lives. And yep. I think when you look at even the rise of IoT endpoints and edge computing, there's yep. more data being created in more places. Absolutely. I think um, initially customers tried to consolidate their data, but they seem set now and leaving it where it is. And so yep. I think you're right, this concept of you know, DLP here and DLP here, and yeah. you know, it doesn't work anymore, yeah, exactly, right? So it's, exactly. it's too hard to, to, yeah, to keep yeah, consistent. Yeah. And a lot of things uh, are like the data sovereignty, for example. Yeah. Hey, how do you ensure that this data from the Europe region stays in Europe region and not going anywhere else? So that's one example. And then an interesting... Yeah, uh, or even at a country level, right? Yeah, so, even yeah. at a country level, uh, you, you know, a, 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 a privacy law in California is different from somewhere yeah. else, for example. So it's, it's a lot of uh, those regulations. And also we kind of expect to see a lot of uh, data lineage type functionality coming into this market, like yeah. saying, hey, it's one thing to know that, hey, you have sensitive data in so and so place, but it's most important to understand who downloaded it, where they downloaded it, where they sent it afterwards, yeah. and things like that. And that's why we at Zscaler, because we are in line and we see everything that the users or the applications are doing, we, we feel like we can help the customers f paint that full picture, not just say, hey, you have the sensitive data, but it's downloaded here from there, from here it went there. And then, you know, it helps the companies to kind of respond incidents much quicker and things like that. Yeah, I actually think you can help companies move their projects along, right? That with AI, there's a lot of kicking to the tires. Yeah. And my research shows that about 30% of customers stall their AI projects because of governance. And yeah. while data governance isn't the only aspect of governance, yeah. it's certainly a big part of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I think if you can solve that problem, a lot of these projects that are stuck, yeah. you can move on. I, I want to share one example. Like, it's, it's really funny, but also very serious. Uh, 
case of if you are not careful with the AI and the data, what ha what can happen for you? Okay, so let's uh, there is a live example like you walk into a, a a dealership, a car dealership, and then they want to be creative and they 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 build this the chat GP, chat GPT type interface to say hey, yeah talk to us about our car features and things like that. And then a smart user walks in and says, hey, what's the fastest car today, just as an example. And then it responds back like, say, Tesla or something like that. So now you are in a Chevy dealership. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then the generative AI responded Tesla. And then it's like, okay, where can I buy this? And then it gives a link. Then you have, your customer is gone, right? Like, so yeah. you have to make sure that you have controls in place. Yeah, the guardrails. And, and in, yeah. in, in, in what is that going into the chat GPT and, and it's not cutting corrupted and it's, nobody's poisoning it and things like that. And data production plays a very important role because now we can intercept, we can see what it is, and then we can allow that prompt to go through or not, for example. Yeah. All right, well, that was a fascinating conversation. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, I think, uh, um, I, I think, a lot of customers are trying to get their arms around this data production, uh, especially in the SaaS and the public cloud environments. On-prem, they have had that for a while and they know that. And this is where I think a solution like DSPM can help them really answer questions to their board, to their auditors, to the cyber insurance companies to say that, hey, we know what we have, we are doing the right things to protect that data, we also know who has access to it, and DSPM is the way they can answer all these questions. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, on that note, uh, really appreciate having you on. Thank you. And uh, so, DSPM, uh, super important AI. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, on behalf of Shrikanth Nulari from Zscaler at AWS reInvent, I'm Zia Scaravala from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast.